Life is hard and God is good. It's caused me to stop there and settle with life is hard. He wants me to remember he's still working and miracles can still happen and healing can happen and new things can happen. The problem that you have today, God can solve it, but there's gonna be a new problem tomorrow. I felt like I was asking God to play whack-a-mole and say, fix this thing. And then there's another thing. And I felt like the Lord was like, dude, what if you just need to be with me? Patrick Mayberry on the Joy FM. I am so excited to, ha to have this time with you. I am so excited to be here. <laughs> Are you you going to lean into the mic? Um, I just want to make sure we've got good audio here. Make sure this is working. Can everybody hear me? Are we good? Are we good with audio? So I feel like I need to prepare the audience for we're a, just, we're here to wild have a wild ride. We're here to have a good time. We are here to have... If you can't have fun in life... What are you doing? What are you doing? Life's too short. You're to not be listening serious. to Patrick Mayberry's songs. That's what you're not doing. Amen. Right? But you can. Um, I'm going serious. You have four <clears throat> kids. Yes. Kids have a way of embarrassing you by saying the things and doing the things that they shouldn't do. Um, I'm going to give you an example at my house. One time we were coming out of Sports Academy. And I saw a lovely older man mm -hmm. um, walking towards us with a patch over his eye. Okay. And I knew my Ellie Sweet was beeline to him to ask him about where his pirate ship and where, oh, no. where was the booty? Like, where, uh -huh. how, how do you walk the plank? And I could not grab her fast enough uh -huh. um, to tell her not to do that to this nice um, older man. And so she said, are, are you a pirate? And I could not get a shovel to dig a, a ditch like fast enough to hide in. Right. That's great. Yeah, but he was a champ because he, he said, yarr. Like he oh, went with the whole bit. I love him. You've got to. If you wear if a you're, patch. You're, you're, asking for, you're asking for trouble. You are. Yeah, you can't go out in public like that. You're, so I am sure with four kids, you have got to have Did some. he uh, pillage uh, My, Academy Sports? <laughs> I don't know. I had to run. That was a pirate joke. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. I mean, kids are always 3000%. They're always, we have, ours are 13, 11, 10 and seven. So, uh, we're on the brink of, of pure chaos at all times. It's a, uh, it's wild ride. <laughs> it is a wild ride, especially cause you're the dad. Yeah. My wife will make the joke of, she'll be like, and this is our, this is my fifth child, uh, Patrick, my husband. Um, <laughs> Yeah, kids are the best. We, <laughs> I feel like I, I have too many of moments like that where your kid does something in public. Uh, it would be hard to pinpoint just one. I would need, I need a good think on that. One. It would be a book. But we have a, it would be a book. Yes, uh, and we don't have time for a it. big thick coffee table book. Like Fourteen chapters. Yes, gotcha. Um, so lead on, Good Shepherd. Hit number one. Right. And can I tell you, the Joy FM listeners, we are love, love, loving it. Let's go. It is so <laughs> good. Um, so when you meet people who love the song, what stories are they telling you? Well, first of all, it has been so flippin' encouraging just that so many people have connected with the song. And um, it came out of like a Psalm 23 kind of you know, in, in, in kind of a dark place in the valley um, of asking God, like, it's a prayer of like, you know, the Lord walks with us, the Lord guides us, he protects us, um, he leads us by still waters. And I'd always heard that scripture in the context of like funerals. It's kind of a comforting verse. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was sharing with some friends, I was like, guys, we should take this verse and flip it and make it be more of like, no, this is who God is, and this is who I've seen God to be in my life. And his track record has proven that he's, like, so faithful. And so I'm going to stick with that guy. I'm with mm -hmm. him, lead on, good shepherd. And so that's where the whole premise came from. And so to hear stories of people who are hearing the song um, and, and kind of claiming it as, like, this is my song of faith as I'm walking into some season of unknown or uh, something new— I, I was just like, it, it's just wild when when you write a small little simple song and lots and lots of people connect with it. A really cool story. I am so not a sports guy. 
uh, and some friends had to tell me about this. Um, but there's a quarterback uh, for the NFL who uh, a guy named Kirk Cousins. He was playing <laughs> with the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. And they were kind of navigating uh, a, an off season and what would be next. And um, I was actually on vacation with my family, and I came back and picked up my phone from being out with my kids and had a bunch of texts. We're like, dude, did you see what Kirk Cousins' wife posted? She posted Lead On Good Shepherd playing on the radio. And I went and looked at the at the post, and she was like, this has been our song all through the off season, navigating mm -hmm. what we would do next with whatever team. And how wild is it that this song would be playing the day we go to sign with the Atlanta Falcons? And I'm just like, <sighs> and so it's just wild yeah. to see your songs connecting with real people in real life situations of navigating big decisions, mm -hmm. job changes, you know, moving their families. Um, it's just wildly encouraging. Isn't so. it so cool that like music is such a gift and totally. how it connects people? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And was it affirming to you to um, have your first number one hit? Like, oh yeah, totally. What amazing. did you do? What did you? Uh, how did you celebrate? Or did you? Uh, so my my church, uh, we live right outside of Nashville, but our church is in downtown Nashville. And the Monday that we found out, uh, my wife and I actually had an event at church that night, and then we told the babysitter to stay later, and we went to Broadway. And we walked around Broadway in Nashville and went to all the honky tonks and just celebrated. You're like, number so, one. So fun. No, it is so wildly, it's just affirming and really yeah. encouraging. Um, I told somebody the difference, bef uh, I was like, you know what the difference is before you get a number one and after? I was like, nothing. You're still just as self-conscious as ever. But if anything, I'm super encouraged. And I'm like, man, if they'll give me a number one, I think anybody could get a number one. So what else can we do? So it's just, I, I feel like we didn't sacrifice anything. When, when, when I write songs, I'm trying to write real true songs that I believe can connect with real humans, mm. pointing them to like a real God. Mm. And so even with the songwriting and the production, I just want it to be what I want it to be. And I'm not thinking what's going to be, what's going to work. Um, so it's really neat to see that that's what we did with lead on good shepherd. And it, it, it's, it's cool that it worked. I guess it, it feels weird saying, but it's cool that it had success it connected with and people. people connected and, yeah. and it, and I didn't compromise anything and it, it just made, I feel like the Lord was like, buddy, like keep going. What, what do you want to do next? What, what do you want to like, let's keep going. So. It's truly encouraging. Can I say the most shocking thing that you said is that, um, like your insecurities, because I'm looking at you and I'm like, yeah. you have like a number one, you're on the radio, oh. you, you have an amazing voice, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's so interesting how those insecurities are so internal mm -hmm. and everybody in the outside could be like, I don't, why? Totally. Yeah. It's, I, I think it's the same. It's, it's just human it's what we all it's like being a fraud or imposter syndrome of you know what is anybody like who, what is anybody really doing or we're all just um figuring it out fake it till you make it mm -hmm. but i i had this thing the lord taught me like over the course of several years a lot of counseling but i felt like i got to release a lot of my uh, I don't necessarily struggle with feeling disqualified. It's feeling unqualified. And it's just part of my upbringing. And I didn't really grow up in church. I didn't grow up around Christian music or worship music. Um, so I think I just felt like an outsider who, you know, just didn't really know the lay of the land and had no, um, just didn't have anything to stand on. And, and I felt like the Lord was like, dude, the only thing you need is you're my kid. And that's the only like qualification. I, it doesn't matter if you can sing or write songs or you grew up in that ministry or you're a part of that worship team. It just matters that you're mine. So it, 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 so that, that was a point probably about six or seven years ago. And then several years of, you know, figuring out, okay, I think God told me this and then talking with my counselor a lot and, praying and asking God to help me like 
figure out, like unravel that and what that really means. And so, um, yeah. It's so interesting because it, you know, it is definitely a lie from the pit of hell because if Satan could keep you there, that's what he's going to want you to do. He's going to want you to lap that up. Right. That insecurity that you don't know it. Right. You know what? Um, you celebrate the high, high of having, um, a number one hit. Yes. To the low, low of um, your parents' health declining. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. It seems like a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Uh, my mom has kind of undergone some like mental stuff this last year that's been really hard and just navigating all that and seeing how it's kind of playing out with my dad and just family dynamics. I feel like fam- family dynamics can really like, they're just on like, full, full tilt when, when stuff like that happens. So yeah, it's been like weird and grieving and, and what was isn't anymore and, um, kind of not knowing what's next and we're kind of just in it. And, um, even for my kids, it's their grandparent. And, um, but I, I, I will say, I don't want to put a, but there's good because Mm -hmm. it's just really sad and hard. And, and I think life can just be really hard sometimes and doesn't dictate God being not good. I think, I think the, the two coexist, like life is hard and God is good. Um, I think the Lord has taught me though on the like mountaintop moments, uh, and the really low moments, um, there's no consistency, but the one consistency, not to be cheesy, but he really is the good shepherd who promises mm. like through it all, like we're going to walk through it together. I'm going to guide you every single step of the way. And he promises to not leave us or forsake us. And, um, and for me, that's really, that's really good news. And it doesn't solve anything actually. Like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't heal anybody but it's um, it's just it's like hope that we're not, you don't have to walk through it alone. So I'm still very much figuring out what that looks like. For I feel like my wife and I both we would say we've lived a very fortunate like life thus far, where we haven't had a lot of like heavy loss or grief or traumatic experiences, which is very wild because I feel like that is not true for most people. And so it's just kind of our first tango with, with just kind of sadness and hard things and just trying to, you know, be present with God and our kids and each other and, and, and just kind of name it for what it is. And I have to be careful because I think I'm in the spot right now where, uh, I think the Lord was, want was, is cool with this, but it's like life is hard and God is good. And, and, and I think it's caused me to, to stop there and settle with life is hard. Um, and I think the Lord is like right now inviting me to be like, okay, you sit there for a little while. And then I think what's next around the corner is that he's going, he, he wants me to remember that life is hard. He is good. Dot, dot, dot. I think around the corner is like, he's still working. And, and he can still work and miracles can still happen and healing can happen and new things can happen. So I'm not there yet. I, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a fate thing, but I, I think that's where God has, he's like, you sit here for a while, let that sink in. It's kind of like the story of, of Lazarus. Um, and when Lazarus passes away, uh, Jesus shows up on the scene fully God, aware of the whole situation and knowing that he's going to actually raise Lazarus from the dead. But he just chooses to show empathy and he chooses to cry and be sad. And then he raises Lazarus, problem solved, right? Fixes it. But the reality is Lazarus dies some years later. Like he eventually dies again. And it was just a uh, an, an illumination of like, oh yeah, like miracles happen, but it's almost like they are not, um, they're for today. And it's like the, the problem that you have today 
God can solve it, but there's going to be a new problem tomorrow. And it's, I just, I felt like I was asking God to play Mm whack-a-mole and say, fix this thing. And then there's another thing. And I feel like the Lord was like, dude, what if you just need to be with me? And so that's kind of the season I'm in right now. And I'm Mm -hmm. excited to see the next season of what God's going to do and what, you know, what's next in the journey of following Jesus. What a, what a fun ride it is. Well, and I can tell that you have a special love and bond with your mom. Yeah. And I um, always have to remind myself when I try to hold tight to the people that I love is that God loves them even more than yeah, I can totally. ever love them. Totally. Patrick, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I loved my time. 